Citizen Swing <clears throat> Deep Down 25th Anniversary Version, where I play through all the songs from uh, the second CD by Citizen Swing Deep Down, and I let my 50-year-old self analyze, critique, and suggest new ideas to my 25-year-old self who wrote these bass lines in the first place. So for this song, uh, there's quite a few things to comment about. The first is that intro. Uh, there's some guitar work going on, some staccato notes that are happening, and I wanted to add a part to that, uh, but I wanted it to be in the same range or register as where the guitars were doing. And they were doing these slides uh, up and slides down, so I wanted to do something like that as well. So what I ended up doing is I, I picked a harmonic, and I'm on the, the, uh, the 19th fret of the D string, which is the same harmonic as the seventh fret of the D string, uh, but by doing it on the 19th fret, I can I can slide the harmonic down. So I, I get the harmonic on the 19th fret, and then I press in and slide down. And the pitch there is the same pitch as the, as the harmonic. So it works, whereas if I did it at the seventh fret, it's, it's a different pitch, it's an octave higher. So I do the 19th fret harmonic, press in and slide down. So while the guitars are doing their little bit, I'm doing that. And then we come in and we got that really just perfectly solid da, 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 drum fill by uh, Mike Shergi, who's just one of the only guys I know that can do eighth notes like that that are just rock solid. It's I think it's all those years in drum corps or something. He doesn't speed up, slow down. Every note is exactly the same volume as every other note. It's just he's just so precise and amazing. I love I love Shergi so. So he does that little fill, and I come in, and then the guitars are coming in, and they're again they're doing kind of a uh, type of thing. And so I add to that, but I I always like to to add a yang where there's a yin, and so I'm doing the opposite. I am going from low to high. So they're going from high to low down. I'm going low to high up, and then I hit that open E. And I think that works really well. I wouldn't change anything uh, for that part right now. In fact, most of this bass line, I think uh, I, I didn't change anything but one thing at the very end. So that's the main riff for the verse. Uh, and then we got this nice little, uh, on the pre-chorus, we got this uh, sort of 2 five, one type of thing happening. Uh, we go from A to E major, G, 
to D major. And so instead of playing root notes there, I'm descending chromatically. So I start on the A, and then for the E chord I play G sharp, and then for the G I play the G, and then on the D chord I play F sharp. And then that uh, the first time through that takes you back to the to the riff. Right? And uh, out of the riff, getting into the second verse, I do a little fill. Which is very similar to uh, the riff from Tom Sawyer, right? Uh, right, very similar to that riff from Tom Sawyer. Uh, that may be intentional, I don't remember. I think it just kind of fit. It goes down the scale in alternating, you know, thirds. Right? last three notes are actually a D major triad. A, F sharp, D, which gets you back to the E chord. So then another verse, the second time through the pre-chorus, uh, descending chromatically, and then take, I, I do some approach notes up to the G. So I play the A, the G sharp, and then I go E, F sharp into G. And then F sharp. Repeats, and then the second time through after the F sharp, now we go to the bridge and we go to that uh, just an E chord. And th those um, those kind of intro guitars come back, but the chord progression is now E to D and then C major and then an A major chord. So for the A major chord, I play a C sharp in the bass. So I play an E for the E chord, D, C, C sharp for the A. So A with a C sharp bass. So we've kind of done a change of mode here. We were in, well, we're still, I guess we're still in E minor technically. So that goes on for a while, and then we get out of that. And now we're in the guitar solo, which is basically over the riff in E. Out of the guitar solo, there's that little uh, Tom Sawyer lick again, and we do that whole uh, verse. And then the last time through the pre-chorus, I add a little bit more, and this time, instead of playing the G sharp, I play the E, and then the G, and then instead of the F sharp, I play the D, and I play it on the, on the low B string. <coughs> Excuse me. So. So by doing that descending chromatic line earlier in the song, uh, it's kind of jazzier, I guess, if you want to say. But those chord changes are are not going up and down in fourths and fifths. They're more they're smoothly descending chromatically, and they have a little bit less weight. So when we get to the end of the song, and I play the root note finally, that adds a tremendous amount of weight and depth to the chords there, and really kind of seals the deal on that uh, that last pre-chorus, it really makes it heavier. Um, and then uh, I, I did forget to mention there's a little chromatic thing that I will do between the two times. So I do a little octave uh, walk up to the E again. I do that at the second time as well. So E, uh, uh, sorry, uh, A, E, G, D, then the chromatic walk up. The end of the song is the same uh, as the riff. Um, and the one thing that I, my 50 year old self is gonna do is, um, uh, what is it? It's, um, oh, it's on that uh, build up. So the build up. There's a little drum fill that Shergy does. And, and I can add that in a little rake across the string. So I didn't do that originally in 1995, but I'm adding it in now, and that's my final answer. Okay, so that's my uh, walkthrough and critique and analysis of uh, the bass line for, for feelers. Uh, I'm wearing my Craig Johnson uh, shirt to remember Craig, uh, who was taken from us just about three years ago, uh, end of September 2017, in a tragedy. Uh, and we're still seeking justice for him. 
So uh, check out Justice for Craig A. Johnson, Idaho, on Facebook, a Facebook group, if you're interested in learning more about that. And uh, the family is seeking justice for his wrongful death. So keep Craig Johnson in your memory. Uh, keep Jeff Miller in your memory. Uh, both of those guys uh, were taken from us much too soon. So anyway, take care and stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.